Hello, everyone, and good evening. Welcome to another interview here on Tales from the Wandering Scribe. I am your host, Gail Garcia, otherwise known as the Wandering Quill and the Wandering Scribe. And in today's episode, we are joined by yet another author today. Now, my guest today has dreamt of stories since childhood and has always wanted to share them with others. She is a longtime writer of fantasy and romance featuring dark and paranormal themes. Her book often includes dramatic plot twists, cliffhangers, and morally great characters. She is an avid reader and needs at least two cups of coffee to function. She lives in the Midwest with her family and a horde of adopted animals. And her debut novel comes out later this year, or more specifically, close to this summer. And to tell us all about her book, let's give a huge round of applause to Stephanie Payne. Steph, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So before we dive into the questions, um, are there anything more you'd like to tell our viewers and listeners about um, your background? Um, well, I went to college for, I was an English major, uh, creative writing, and I minored in history. So I've always been super into storytelling from college on for sure. Nice, nice. And then what can you tell our readers about your upcoming book that's coming out soon? So uh, this is the first book of a series. It comes out May 23rd. And the general theme of the book is revenge. So the main character Ooh. is, uh, yeah, she's on a revenge mission to basically destroy the cult who uh, murdered some of her family members and cast out the rest. Nice, nice. A good little revenge theme yeah. story. Always nice to have those. Yeah. So in your uh, bio, you've always loved stories growing up um, as a child. So tell us about um, that, like how the stories of your childhood transformed into creating your very first novel. Um. Even when I was little, uh, I just like to tell stories. We would, my siblings and I would act out plays that we made up or um, we'd go on drives. We did a lot of uh, cross country vacations and we would just make up stories in the car about whatever was we were driving by, things like that. So I think um, from very young, I was all about making things up and using my imagination to create people and worlds and things. Um, so it was kind of made sense to go this way. Nice. And would you say that's kind of like your aha moment that you want to become an author and a writer or did that come later in life? Uh, I think it was, it was pretty young because I was a big reader. I started read. Uh, my mother was a history teacher and um, I started. Nice. Reading, uh, yeah. So Stephen King was one of the first big authors that I read in middle school and um, I did a paper actually, I think it was like seventh grade on the book It and my teacher didn't believe me because she thought the book was too big and I wouldn't know how to read it. So that wow. was fun. <laughs> but, Dang. Um, yeah, so I just, I've always loved reading stories and I think part of that was because I someday wanted to make up my own. Nice. Just a little tangent here. You're probably the second guest I've mentioned who's uh, parent is a history teacher, so that instantly makes me happy. I history lovers, we we're good at telling stories. We yeah. love to tell stories, and the history is in itself the largest story like ever told, like the greatest stories ever told, and that is always fascinating. And so talking Definitely. about your thank you, so talking about your revenge uh, novel, your revenge story. What is sort of the need or desire you want to satisfy? By four years, or you hope to satisfy when it comes out? Um, I think one of my favorite things that I you'll find in most of my stories will be uh, main female characters who are just badass all on their own. Um, I also like the development of female relationships with, with friends, having close friends, people they trust, things like that. You see a lot of the novels where it's just one girl doing her thing, and meets a love interest immediately and then that's how it goes from there so this is a little bit different where 
there are love interests more than one and um but there are also some several badass female characters that kind of steal the show nice and what would you say is your ultimate promise uh for this uh book and the rest of the books in this series um there will probably be a uh, several cliffhangers i've already been scolded by arc readers uh for some of the cliffhangers but there's there's always going to be a uh, plot twist people aren't ever exactly who they say they are i like the readers to kind of be guessing the whole time to see what's really going on and what's going to happen next nice and speaking of arc readers and beta readers so when you created the first draft of your story what was the initial feedback uh, from those uh, reviewers? Was it positive, negative, or mixed? Um, it was more positive than I expected. I uh, didn't really know what to expect. Um, this was not the first novel I've written, but it's the first one that I've shared and decided to publish. And so I was very nervous about um, sharing it with people and seeing what they had to say. And to get some alpha readers in immediately, interested and wanting me to keep going and um, liking the story was very cool nice that's always great to hear and you actually hit a nail on the head when it comes to like sharing stories with like uh strangers and not knowing you know how are they going to take it are they going to resonate with the characters that's probably yeah. one of the biggest uh fears for any author is are they going to like it but i'm glad that a lot of the reviewers you've had you've said really do enjoy the story or have like identified with the characters. And from there, do you feel that your initial promise thus far has been validated by these reviewers? Yeah, I think so. And um, they've given really good feedback and asked good questions sometimes that I also think has made the novel even better. So the one that's coming out um, for the general public is twice as good as the original one um, because of the, collaborative and like friendly environment with those readers. Definitely, definitely. And speaking of uh, collaboration, I'm sure you will definitely agree, uh, Steph, that as authors, we probably have this fear of imposter syndrome when it comes to like writing um, stories. And I've always talked about this on the show that for us authors, it's a lonely business. We spend hours and hours writing a project putting our blood, sweat, and tears into it. And we don't know if it's ever going to hit the mark or really make the connections that we're really hoping for. We have all these grand ideas and we really want to resonate with the audience, no matter how big or small. And that kind of deflates a lot of indie authors to pursue. But for you, Steph, as you mentioned before, that you've already written a book before, but this is the first book that you're sharing and publishing to a wide audience. So what has disciplined you to do that? What is your why to write? Um, I mean, I think there's, it's probably layered as far as the why, uh, because in the, you know, the having the dream of wanting to publish a book and wanting one of my own stories to be out there and to physically hold it kind of thing. Um, and I also had someone who, um, another author uh, who I talked with when I was in the beginning stages of this book and hadn't really fully written it out yet and was asking advice from her. And her advice was literally just, you just got to do it. It was the most basic thing to say, but it really stuck with me that that's true. You, you're all on your own. It's your book. It's your story. Mm -hmm. you're person stopping you from getting it out there so you just got to do it and that's kind of what I kept in my head for the whole process well that is very very good and it is exactly true that like this is our passion project this is our child that we are bringing into the digital world to share with people and there is always that fear but there's always that sense of a accomplishment when you actually see it and you physically hold a project that you've been working on there's no better feeling than that and i also think for any author when writing a book and specifically what type of book you want to do in the genre and the themes is a lot of research 
And that also stems from the books that we read growing up. Now, Steph, you've mentioned that Stephen King were, was one of the authors that you read growing up. Uh, it uh, was one of the books that you mentioned. Um, is there mm -hmm. any other authors you would like to uh, name drop or any books you would like to mention that have really helped you develop your voice as an author? Um, I mean, millions probably. It's not even an exaggeration over the years. But um, more recently, I would say one of my favorites uh, is Deborah Harkness. She She's also a teacher and I she's at a university in Southern California, but I forget what she is exactly. But I know she studied uh, medieval history. And so she wrote this um, paranormal trilogy with witches and vampires and things like that. But she fully immersed it into uh, real time. And then they went back in time to medieval England. And it was just really cool uh, to see that blend of real things happening with this imagination that she brought in with her witches and vampires. I, I loved her writing style. I've actually met her and she's a really cool human. Um, so she's definitely one of my inspos for sure. Nice. That's actually really, really cool. There's, there's no better feeling than reading a book, but also meeting the author as well. I mean, that's must yeah. have been an incredible uh, feeling for you to have to actually meet one of the authors that you've admired their work and to talk with them. Yes, she was just as cool in person, super nice. Um, and it was fun because she, I'm in the Midwest and she came to a, a small library just to do um, an author signing. So I thought that was really cool. Nice. And now we're going to turn over to more of the business side of the interview, which I definitely think is very important. So for you, Steph, when you finished the um, interviews, or maybe you're still in the process of doing the final edits, final reviews before uh, the book, and you may have actually done this ahead of time, but when you decided, I want to publish this story, did you want to go the traditional publishing route or did you already set your minds on going the self-publishing, the indie author route? Um, many years ago, I thought it was going to be the traditional route. Um, that even 10, 15 years ago, the publishing industry was very different from what it is now. So yeah. um, I always thought it was going to be the traditional route. And I did an internship with a literary agency. And um, oh. it was a lot of fun being on that side. But it also just shows you how crazy it is on that side mm -hmm. and how so many books come through and so many books don't get picked up. Um, yeah. And being on that side of it and then seeing where the industry is now, I kind of flipped my script and decided I wanted to try and do the indie route and see what would happen. Yeah, um, I 100% I agree that... Traditionally, publishing has like changed from, like you mentioned, 10 years ago. The publishing world in general has definitely changed. Like, I'm sure you definitely agree, Steph, that 10, 20 years ago, if you thought, oh, you're an indie author or self-published author, there's all, there was that stigma that it's not professional, that it's not mm -hmm. polished. And traditionally published was, you know, the go-to. And now here we are 20 years later, and a lot of authors are self-publishing. And some of the books are like you couldn't even tell the difference between a self-publishing book and a traditionally published book and this is not to say that traditionally publishing isn't the wrong thing to do it's all about the author's uh, preference but it is important to know that there are benefits and hindrances to both now the benefits of traditionally publishing as you would uh, agree Seth being uh, who have worked in an agency before that yes you would tackle a wide audience but it is a business. And if a literacy agency or a book publishing house takes your book, they want it to sell. And if it doesn't sell, you're gone. You're yeah. at. And that's the unfortunate hard truth. For self-publishing, you have more creative control, but it's all on you. Cover art, editors, mm -hmm. um, marketing, which I think is probably the biggest thing to do when it comes to indie um, authors. I'm still struggling to market my own book. And yeah. When you decide to do that, um, Steph, did all of those um, things kind of like really hit you when you decided to go to self-publishing? Like, 
oh, I actually really have to like do this and kind of like find the sweet spot of like how to like balance everything. I'm probably still finding that. Um, I don't think I've mastered any of it, but I am a serial researcher. So I joined tons of Facebook groups for writers and read all kinds of as much information as I could about where to start, what to do first. Um, the marketing side is definitely not my niche at all. So I had to do um, a lot of studying and learning and just following other indie authors who seem to be succeeding and seeing what they're doing and mimicking it in my own way. It's, it's definitely a lot though. <laughs> yes, definitely. And in your um, opinion, Steph, regarding um, marketing, what's probably the one thing in your research that you found that's like very critical for all authors who want to launch their book and the things that most indie authors don't take into consideration when they're about to launch their book? Um, as At least for me, um, being uh, on the book community of Instagram has been the most beneficial. And like constantly posting every day and not just making your own posts, but interacting with mm -hmm. lots of other people on there, commenting, starting conversations. Um, it's... I read a lot of that, of saying that that's what you had to do. And I was like, okay, that sounds weird or generic, or I don't know how to do that. And um, kind of just goes back to my original advice of just got to do it. It's the same thing. And you just got to get out there and start talking to people and see what happens. Definitely. And yet Instagram is like a hub for indie authors and right. book reviewers. I mean, I have never seen so many, but it is true for social media. I mean, that is a huge platform for all indie authors because it allows you to see the target audience, which I definitely think is another thing on the UDF degree stuff is important for all indie authors to really do research in and consider, which is um, the target audience. So in your opinion, um, Steph, how did you sort of define your target audience? Were you specifically looking at a broad audience for your book when you were uh, fine-tuning or still fine-tuning it and polishing it or did you decide to set on a specific group of readers who are into the fantasy revenge or that kind of thematic storytelling um i was already reading in that genre and my book is also pretty spicy and so <laughs> um i joined several Facebook groups geared towards readers and same thing on Instagram and um, just to kind of like get to know those reader groups and see what they were recommending and reading those books too. And um, it kind of helped me figure out how I could talk to them about my book based on all the things I was seeing in those groups that are in the same genre. Nice. That's actually very, very true. And actually going back to to the ARC reviewers, there's actually another question I did want to ask you, which is when it comes to like reviewers from like beta readers and ARC uh, reviewers, um, they always make uh, comparisons to other books that are very familiar of the same genre. And I'm yeah. sure you probably have read stories in your own personal time saying, oh, it's Game of Thrones meets Jurassic Park or <laughs> Lord of the Rings meets Terminator. And everyone says, oh, these are the next um, authors. And I asked this question uh, because a lot of authors are kind of like hesitant on like the comparison of their stories. Like, I'm glad you're seeing the comparison in my story to a story that's out there, but I'm not trying uh, to be like them. So for you, Steph, how do you sort of like balance that sort of like, it is a compliment to your work as an author, but you don't want to try to be, or at least not your intended goal to be the next uh, so and so. Yeah, it would be hard if somebody was saying you're like you're the next Game of Thrones or you're the next Sarah J. Maas Throne of Glass series because that mm -hmm. feels very daunting. If someone read your book and it wasn't the same, and then they would like dislike your book. So I try not to do comparisons or would want to be compared to someone who's so revered because uh, that would be intimidating. Um, but I do 
try and find um, other authors that I think are succeeding and being awesome and can say like, if you like that book, you'd probably like mine based on just vibes, you know? Um, right. So there's a couple others. Uh, one, Harley LaRue. I really like her as a person and she writes um demon themed stories with spice and so those two things are something that mine also has um worlds are very different but um if i was going to say anybody was similar it would probably be that all right okay fair now do you have an like ideal a reader that you imagine that would enjoy um this story of yours or do you not have a specific reader and just try to find people who like enjoy the book in general like if you enjoy it if you enjoy it if not that's okay it's not your cup of tea and that's perfectly fine i i mean I, there's obviously books i've read that weren't my favorite so i know there's going to be people that i'll read mine or start it and it won't be for them and i i don't mind that at all everyone should be honest about what they like to read and what they're not interested in so i, I don't know that i have a ideal reader other than I want my book to find people that are interested in the paranormal romance and the spicy and like have those badass female characters um, kind of take the show. So right. it's more like, I hope the readers that are like into those genres will find my book. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. And sort of like another question before we get into the next set of questions. So looking back at where your book is now, do you feel that it's the same as when you initially uh, thought of it and has it stayed the same? Um, some of it has changed. I um, take a ton of notes. And so I'll look back at some of the original little scenes or notes that I wrote for the story and just be like, oh, that was going to be in the book. And um, it's something I completely forgot about or was very different but it's more little pieces of which way the story could have gone versus how it is now. And um, I'm more of the, I think they call them like pansters or something like that. The readers okay. who aren't plotting, they're kind of just writing as it comes to them. So I'll plot out a little bit, but then the scenes just kind of happen. So uh, writing in that style means that new things or new subplots will show up that I didn't anticipate originally. That's actually an interesting term. I've never heard about that. So mm -hmm. pretty much it's just you're writing and then you just write this new subplot or new side quest in the story. And it's like, oh, I didn't intend for this, but let's just see where that goes. I've never yeah. heard about that. And do you think it's beneficial or helpful? And I ask this because um, a lot of authors say that it's good to have an outline to follow, but sometimes it's good to have the general idea of the story, like the beginning, middle, and end. Where would you say your uh, organization of the story is? In between or leaning to one of those two? I'm, I'm probably in between. I think my uh, first draft was that fly by the seat of your pants kind of writing where it was just coming out and I just had to get the story out and uh, it was happening in my brain as it was coming out. So um, it's kind of like I see it like a movie and I just write it down as quickly as I can. Um, but since it's a series and there's so much more uh, layer, so many more layers to the story, I have started plotting. So um i'm and i make sure to write things down uh i do have a terrible memory so i have to write down the sneaky plot twists and things that i know the readers are going to pick up on and make sure that i pull those into the next book so i become a plotter um when it's getting into the next books to make sure i stay on track definitely and you know i 100 percent agree and that's probably the thing about about us authors is that we're constantly thinking of our story even if we're not trying to we always see inspiration around us and it's like oh that'd be a good idea oh he's doing something and we yeah. jot it down and it's a struggle it is a struggle and trying to contain all that stuff to put into the story 
And then it comes to the realization when we have to edit it and take what's something that we thought was good and then realize it's probably a good idea to remove that. <laughs> and that good comes with like growth as like an author as we mm -hmm. advance in our lives and our writing styles. And this also goes again to, again, in imposter syndrome, what I think is a very important topic to discuss for any uh, field, in any occupation. So for you, um, Steph, and I think you may have already answered this before. So have you ever had an instance of imposter syndrome when you were writing um, this story and then deciding whether or not to publish it? And if so, how did you defeat it or move away from it? Um, I still have imposter syndrome. I think everybody, every writer has it forever. Um, it just kind of, you learn how to deal with it and tuck it away so that it's not overwhelming you. Um, but I was also, uh, in the beginning, I, you know, didn't think I needed an editor per se. I was like, no, mm -hmm. I can edit everything. I was an English major. I'll catch everything. And that's just silly. It's not true. Um, and when I first got an editor and I was reading her feedback and there are things that she wanted to change, or she was like, this isn't working. There's that little voice in your head. That's like, Oh my God, she hates it. This is horrible. I don't know, know why I'm doing this. And so you kind of have to just battle that to know that she's trying to help you or he's trying to help right. you make your story better, not make you feel bad. And uh, so that's just a fun thing that you get to constantly deal with. Yes, true. And it's actually kind of leads into a very important question. And I love asking this question now because it is really important because a, f a previous guest of mine uh, brought this up, which is so give context to this uh, question. So I had a guest on the show, I want to say a year ago. And when I asked her about, you know, creating her book, uh, she said that the book that people most know me for is not my first one. It's my seventh book. And the reason why it's my seventh book is because, in her opinion, that the biggest lie any author could imagine is that their debut novel is going to be the star of their legacy. Now, she did mention that it's a 50-50 chance. Mm -hmm. There's a chance that your first debut novel could be like, the best thing people have read in a very, very long time. It's going to boost your notoriety in the indie author community or in the genres that you were aiming for. And on the other sense, you also have the realization that it will have its moment, but it may sort of fall into obscurity. And that was a very tough pill for me to really uh, swallow and because my book had not been poets at the moment of the interview, my second book, but she is right. It is really true. But she also said to not let that discourage uh, any writer and to just keep going. Because when you do make the book that people uh, know you for, you can show them, hey, you like this book, check out my other six to see my growth. So for you, Steph, in your opinion, do you think that is an important and kind of harsh truth for indie authors to understand that there is a chance that your book may not get the hype you have imagined it to be, but that should not discourage you from writing your story because you are passionate about the story and this is something that you want to do because no one else is going to do it better than you. Yeah, I definitely, I mean, the, as a writer, you should always write the story that you want to write first for yourself and it's for your readers later. So even if it's your first one or your seventh one, if you're loving it, then put it out there. Why not? And it, I agree that your first one might not be the one that everybody falls in love with right away. I mean, even um, I forget the author's name, but she wrote those ice planet barbarian books. I don't know if you've heard them. They're kind of like sci-fi um, spicy. I don't and think so. <laughs> Well, she wrote them a long time ago and they went viral semi-recently and people are reading them again. And they were books that she wrote a long time ago that she did not 
think we're going to come back around by any means. And they did. So even if your debut novel or your first series turns out, it's not that uh, it's not getting the hype or whatever that you thought it might get, maybe it will later. So it definitely does. It might not pay to write it in the beginning, but it's worth it for you. And you never know what will happen in the future with it. That's actually very true. And I actually touched on two other questions I wanted to um, ask you, Seth. So and you answered it perfectly. The first one, which is um, authors should, you know, write for themselves first and then for their uh, readers later. Is that how you approach uh, both your stories on the one you wrote and this one you're currently um, in the works of getting it published? Yeah, I would say always write the novel that you want that's in your head that you fell in love with in your imagination get that out first and when you edit that's when you're like you're editing for your readers so you're making it more understandable making your points come across so that they can feel what you felt when you were writing it that first time Definitely. And then the next question uh, that I want to ask you, which is, as you mentioned just now, that the famous author who wrote about uh, those ice uh, <laughs> spice romance uh, stories and how they're more popular at that time, even though when she wrote them, they weren't as popular uh, before. And that leads into another uh, huge thing for all indie authors is writing for the clicks or the trends. And I brought this question up before in past interviews because it's kind of like a make or break for like any indie author trying to write for like the current trend that's happening, whether it's like vampires, Vikings, historical romance, uh, yeah. paranormal romance or anything on those lines and trying to write a story to join the party. In your opinion, do you feel that kind of deteriorate an author's authenticity in the sense that you are not really writing the best version of yourself. You're just writing to be a part of this trend, which may not last uh, long. And if you are trying to write for a trend, you should be thinking of the trend that's coming later, not mm -hmm. the trend that's happening right now. I mean, if you're doing traditional publishing, you definitely go for the trend that's later because the likelihood that you're going to get published fast enough to be in a current trend is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but as an indie author, if you can put out a book really fast and it's quality and it works for the trend, go for it. I have a harder time writing for four, specifically four trends. If it doesn't like feel authentic to me then I right I can't do it I did I wrote a um mafia romance which they're kind Ooh, of okay in. and uh it was fun to write but I I don't love it and I so I don't know that it would ever I would ever publish it just because it felt more like I was writing for the trend and not necessarily writing because it was a story that I really wanted to tell right so I, I applaud anyone that is going for that and can make it work because absolutely do what works for you. Um, it's just not necessarily for me. It's I try to write what I love more than what's trending. Definitely. And that is really, really true. If you can do it, definitely do it. But if you can't, don't force yourself to yeah. write and to be part of the trend because you'll burn yourself out. You'll probably deflate yourself and then and imposter syndrome is going to come back and really, really bite you in the butt. Yes. And that's the daily struggle for any author. And as you've mentioned um, earlier in the interview about community, which is important for anyone in any business, and especially on Instagram, there's a lot of indie authors, a lot of book reviewers that are really pumping you know, everyone's book because we all – want to help one another we won't want to be a part of each other's successes so for you steph um who have been your biggest supporters um in your author journey um up to this point um well i have a street team that has been absolutely amazing they uh were arc readers and kind of fell in love with the story and wanted to be more a part of the journey and help promote it and stuff. So the, my street team has been awesome and 
they know how to make an author feel good about themselves. So that's, that really helps keep that imposter syndrome down. Um, and I've met a few indie authors um, more recently. Uh, Rachel Fallon is one and um, Whitney, uh, both of them have been really fun to chat with and just hear how they're publishing their books, who they're using, all of that back end stuff that readers don't know that is right. the entire time. Um, and it's just been great bouncing off all of those questions to each other of how we're doing things and juggling life with the, all of that marketing and everything else. So it's been a lot of fun getting to know them. Nice. And that kind of leads into the next question on Steph, which is, have you ever gotten a sense of validation from other indie authors that you've met that you've talked to about, you know, this is what my book's about, this is what's coming in, and you've allowed them to read maybe a few chapters or maybe the whole book private, and then they will give you their own uh, review and talking about, you know, this is good, like this is amazing, because I definitely feel, and like in any occupation, it's one thing to join a field with all the knowledge that you bring, um, still learning about it. It's another thing entirely when your peers recognize it and they commend you, especially in the indie author community, when you have fellow indie authors who have read your book or who have become part of your street team or beta read team or even art team, and they really, really enjoy the story. So have you ever gotten that uh, sense from the other authors that you've uh, spoken with about your book? Yes. Uh, so Rachel and Whitney and I have recently swapped books. So I just started, we, so I haven't, don't have full feedback yet, but everything we've chatted about between our books um, has been really positive. So it's been a lot of fun. And there are a few uh, people on my ARC team who are all, also writers, um, not necessarily published yet, but they're working their way up. So I like having a kind of that mix of people that are solely readers and people that are also trying to get their own books out there being on that hype team because it gives different perspectives and then hopefully I get to help them too. Nice. And then we kind of come down to the second to last question of the interview, uh, Steph. So looking back to where your life is now with your growth as a person, your growth as an author from your first book that you wrote to now working with a team to launch this book coming soon in the summer. Have you ever thought to yourself how your life would have been different if you didn't decide to make the choice to publish this story? Oh, man. Um I, th I think so the some of the stories that one of the first novels that I wrote was when I was around 20 and um, so it's been a little while um, right. and I, I think that it uh, who I am as a person and the knowledge I've gained over the years has actually made my writing better and um, the book I if I would have published then, probably wouldn't have done very well or wouldn't have been as good as what I can do now with all the knowledge I've gained and all the time I've spent practicing. Um, so I, I think the, the path that I took um, doing other things besides writing until now and finally deciding to publish was the right one for me um, instead of maybe having something happen 20 years ago or whatever. <laughs> Nice. Very, very nice. And now we've come to the final question of the interview, Steph. So what is your word of wisdom to um, indie authors who want to make the decision to um, publish their book and transform from writing as a hobby to potentially writing a professional, like writing more books, showing your passion, honing your craft, what is your word of wisdom to them? And I know you probably mentioned it before, but is there anything else you would like to add on um, to what you said? Definitely just keep writing um, because the more you write, the better you are at it. You find out things about your writing style, the more stories you put out there. Um, like I said, the first novel I ever wrote, definitely won't be sharing that with anyone ever, but I will keep it forever. 
um, as something that I created and uh, I can see how different it is just because of all the time I spent practicing and continuing to write. Um, I think the other little tidbit would just be to reach out to those other indie authors and ask questions because I have gotten into a lot of inboxes and just went for it and asked people questions and everybody's so nice. They want mm -hmm. to answer, they want to be helpful. Um, and it's really cool to have that, to have other people reaching out and saying, Hey, you're so good at this. Can you give me some advice? So don't be afraid to do it. I would hundred percent agree. The indie author community has been very, very supportive and I myself have met a lot of great indie authors on Instagram alone who have been featured um, on my channel. And I've learned so much of them. They're so sweet, so kind, so very passionate about their work. And the one thing I've seen that we all share is we are passionate about our stories. We want to tell our stories. And at the end of the day, we're writing for ourselves and we're sharing it with, with the world. And that's all that matters. If people enjoy it, that's great. If a small group of people, a loyal fan base stays with us throughout our journey as an author, then that is the greatest success in the world. And you cannot tell us anything else. And yeah, with that, listeners, this concludes this amazing late night edition interview here on the channel. I want to give a huge thank you to our guest, Steph, for joining us today. Steph, Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And where can people find and engage with you on social media? And where can we expect your book to be um, available for uh, pre-order? So the ebook is up on Amazon. So you can definitely go there now to pre-order. Um, there will also be a paper paperback edition on Amazon. And um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram the most. I'm not so good at TikTok, so I'm working on that. Um, and I am doing a few uh, author signing events that I'm pretty excited about. So in October, I'll be in Covington, Georgia, and uh, the Mystic Nights event. It's in Mystic Falls, if you're a vampire Ooh, diary. Okay. You get it. Um, <laughs> and I'm hoping to do some special editions for the author events. So that's exciting. Awesome. And what is the um, name of your book? If I mean, so the viewers may be able to find it. So book one is called Retaliation and it is book one of the Demons and Lumens series. Awesome. I will link all those down below in the description of this video for you to go and check out my viewers and my listeners. And I want to give a huge thank you to our guest, uh, Steph, for joining us for this late night, late evening interview. And I want to thank all you listeners for joining us today. And until next time, this has been The Wandering Scribe and The Wandering Quill, making sure that you like and subscribe this video and comment down below to hear your thoughts on this episode. And until next time, have a good day. Thanks.